Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be looking at empirical formula and molecular formula. We're going to look at the difference between empirical formula and molecular formula. I'm also be going to go through a question that asks you to find the molecular formula and empirical formula based on given percentage mass of elements in the compound. If you like educational content like this, then please hit the subscribe button. I'll be posting at least one video a week. And if you have learned something from this video, please don't forget to hit that like button to help to support me and my channel. Before we get into the question, let's just look at what molecular formula and empirical formula means. Molecular formula is a chemical formula that shows the actual number of atoms of elements in a compound. This compared to empirical formula, empirical formula is a chemical formula also, but empirical formula only shows the simplest ratio of atoms of elements in a compound. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have the molecule X6Y12. This is the molecular formula. This formula tells us that there are exactly 6 atoms of X and 12 atoms of Y in this molecule. The actual number of atoms in the molecule. Now, if we take the ratio of atoms of X to atoms of Y, then we have 6 to 12. 6 atoms of X to 12 atoms of Y. And if we take the simplest ratio, both can be divided by 6, we get 1 to 2. So the simplest ratio of number of atoms of X to number of atoms of Y is 1 to 2. And this is what will be reflected in our empirical formula. So the empirical formula for this compound is X1, Y2. What if you're asked to find the molecular formula and empirical formula based on just the percentage mass of the elements in the compound given to you? Let's look at this question. A compound X consists of 82.76% of carbon and 17.24% of hydrogen by mass. The molar mass of X is 58 grams per mole. Determine the empirical formula and molecular formula of compound X. And they've given to us the relative atomic mass of carbon and hydrogen. So first, let's just list down all the important points. We have carbon is 82.76%, hydrogen is 17.24%, molar mass of X is 58 grams per mole, and we have the relative atomic mass of carbon and hydrogen, that is 12 and 1. So how do we go about this? When we are looking for empirical formula, the goal that we are going for is to find the simplest ratio of the number of particles. But we don't have to go directly to number of particles. We can stop at moles. With the goal of finding the simplest mole ratio in mind, so we attempt this question. So before we can find the mole ratio, of course, first we need to find the moles. In order to find the moles, we have to see what data is given to us. In this case, they have not given us the mass. Instead, they've given the percentage by mass of each element in the compound. This can be taken as mass. The exact mass of the elements in the compound doesn't matter because we are looking at ratio here. And therefore, we can treat the percentage by mass as the actual mass. So we take the mass of carbon to be 82.76 and then we take hydrogen to be 17.24. Just follow the percentage that is given to us. Now we can find the moles. When we treat this as mass, the formula for moles will be equals to mass over molar mass. So we have 82.76 over 12. Since we are looking at one element, then we are looking at relative atomic mass. So 82.76 divided by 12, this is the value that we get. And for hydrogen is 17.24 divided by the relative atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 1. So we get 17.24. Now that we have the mole ratio, we can find the simplest mole ratio. In order to find the simplest mole ratio, we have to take the lowest value out of all the elements. Here we only have 2, carbon and hydrogen. So between these two, 6.8925 is the lowest value. We take the lowest value and we divide all the numbers by the lowest value. And this is what we will get. 6.8925 divided by 6.8925, 17.24 also divided by 6.8925. You have to remember we are working on ratio here. So whatever you do to one side, you have to perform on the other side as well. This gives us the values 1 and 2.5. When we are looking at the number of atoms, the number of atoms cannot be a fraction. And so we have to make it into the smallest whole number. Anything with a decimal number 0.5, we can multiply by 2 to make it into a whole number. 
So when we multiply by 2 on the right side, we must do the same for the left side as well. So this we get 2 to 5. So the simplest ratio of carbon to hydrogen in X is 2 to 5. And therefore the empirical formula will be C2H5. From the empirical formula, we know that the molecular formula will just be a multiple of the empirical formula. So we can deduce that the molecular formula will be C2H5 multiplied by n. The number of carbon atoms and the number of hydrogen atoms need to be multiplied by one number. And we haven't figured out this number yet. How to figure out this number? For this, we need the molar mass of the compound. The molar mass of the compound is given to us. Molar mass of X is 58 grams per mole. Logically, if the molecular formula is just a multiple of the empirical formula, then it should follow that the molar mass of the molecular formula is simply a multiple of the molar mass of the empirical formula. This value of n and this value of n are the same. The molar mass of the molecular formula is 58. This is what is given to us in the question. The molar mass of the empirical formula we can calculate. How do we calculate the molar mass? We add the relative atomic mass of all the atoms in the empirical formula. So here we have two carbon atoms. So it's 12 times 2 and then we have 5 hydrogen atoms. So it's 1 times 5. 12 for relative atomic mass of carbon, 1 for relative atomic mass of hydrogen. When we add this up, we get 29. So now we can substitute this value into here. So we have 58 is 29 times n. And from this we can find n. n is simply 58 divided by 29, which is 2. Now that we have the value of n, we can substitute the value of n back into this. So we get C2H5, 2. And so the molecular formula will simply be 2 times 2 and 5 times 2. So we get C4H10. This is the molecular formula of compound X. That's it for this video guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please don't forget to hit that like button. And please do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one video a week. If you're interested in doing a daily challenge, then you can follow my Instagram account. My account name is at the corner of the screen and in the description down below. I'll be posting at least one question every day on my story. Hopefully this will help you remember facts better. I'll see you guys in the next video.